In March, I was earning £2,000 a month. I was made redundant. By October, I had nothing left. So then it became £71 a week. OK, you can live off that. But when you get reduced from £71 a week to £0 a week, well, that's a whole different ballgame. Your every waking moment is worrying about where, where your next meal is going to come from. Where's your next meal going to come from? Uh, who knows? Any idea how many people have been sanctioned in the last year? I've heard it's a few thousands. You might be in for a shock. Record numbers of job seekers are having their benefits stopped in this way. Almost 700,000 sanctions were applied from January to October 2012. If the job centre deems you're not trying hard enough to find work, your entire benefit is immediately suspended. It's heaving now compared to what it was. We've seen a real change in the types of need lately. In the last few months, we've seen a lot more people being sanctioned by the job centre. Um, they don't seem like they should be on the on job seekers' allowance anyway. A lot of them. Um, some of them have got um, obvious problems, mental health issues, and things like that. I got sanctioned, yeah, for at least seven weeks, eight weeks it was. The job centre expects us to live on sweet nothing because we've got no, you know, no food, no electric. So what are we supposed to do? Every time I get one of these letters that I'm doing something wrong, it's, it's, it's kind of getting me worried now. I said, where's the next, the next move? Because look, I'm, I'm coming down here, if it weren't for the food, I don't know what I'd be doing. I've been sanctioned. I couldn't get no money from anywhere. I had to beg on the streets, and that's a 12-year serviceman. We want to know why people are being sanctioned, because at the moment, vulnerable people are getting caught in the crossfire. The Guardian has spoken to several job centre staff who describe a culture of targets and pressure to sanction claimants. It's all about stopping people's money. I've been put on a performance improvement plan because I don't sanction enough people. I got told, for example, I need to get X amount of sanctions by March, about two a week. We're facing ever greater pressure to send them off for sanctions. We're seeing the most vulnerable people being sanctioned. People with language difficulties, people who can't read and write, people with learning difficulties. We've been here before. Two years ago, a job centre whistleblower revealed to The Guardian that pressure and individual targets were put on staff to sanction claimants. It's just perverse. Suddenly, in your job, you're not looking to help somebody into sustainable employment, which is what you're employed to do you're suddenly looking for ways to trick your customers into not looking for work. You know, you may have well have read this article uh, at the weekend. <coughs> they are now told in their job centre to sanction three people per week so their benefits are then suspended. So if they don't turn up for a job interview or, or whatever, their benefits are suspended. Uh, and the mantra, he says in his office, is saving the public purse is the catchphrase here. Well, I've never heard such claptrap in my life. No one's given edicts out to sanction three people. I mean, the fact is that people are sanctioned when they refuse to take work. The Department for Work and Pensions later admitted that such targets had been imposed and said these were removed immediately. But here's an example of a performance improvement plan issued to a staff member over a year later. It features a detailed calculation of what is now called a minimum expected level. Each full-time job centre advisor should refer 8.6 customers a month for sanctions. I'm really pretty up against it and pretty desperate to get to be working again. When I was made redundant, I thought, well, you know, my skills and experiences, 20 odd years in social work, it'd be easy to get a job. I was sending 25, 50 CVs out a week to people. On the 15th of November, I was there at three o'clock. Within one minute, she decided I was going to be sanctioned. Allegedly, I was not looking for work in a diligent enough manner. The Friday of the week before I'd had a nine hour assessment interview, but she didn't want to listen to that. It's reduced me from poverty to penury. You stop looking for work, you've got to start thinking in survival terms. I have at times gone to the back of supermarkets and looked for stuff in the bins. I'm not, I'm not proud to say that, but I have. Um, I've also begged a couple of times. As the time's gone on, I'm feeling more and more depressed and I'm feeling 
more and more that I am merely on the scrap heap of life. A year ago I was working with people who had no money and I had all the answers and uh, but now that you're now I'm on the receiving end of it I don't I find I've got no answers.